Um, so it's five o'clock and I am calling to order the finance committee meeting for April 27th, 2021. Um, the first item on our agenda is review of the minutes um, from last week. So a version has been circulated. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to move the minutes for our last meeting of uh, April 20th with the changes that were made. Do a second? Second. All right, any discussion? No, okay, oh, you know what, I'm gonna put down everybody's names. Um, roll call vote, Julie Chelfin, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Skip Olmstead. We got a hand wave. It's an eye. Uh, Jim Cambius. Aye. Allie Vandervelden. Aye. All right. Um, good. So that's five zero zero. I should write my names down so I can do that more smoothly. Um, Jeff. Um, I mean, not Jeff, John Pareski um, did email and say that he's not gonna be able to make it tonight. And um, I don't know if um, John Pachurik is still on the Cape or not. I did leave a message with him, so maybe. No, I, I spoke to him today or yesterday and he was planning to be on tonight. Yeah. Okay. All right, what's our first agenda? I mean, first um, budget uh, item. Right, the, the schools, we might as well go through one by one, uh, go down the list. So let's start with 300-5400. Yeah. That's the elementary school. And their current budget, uh, I gave you all sheets for that last week, I believe. And that's 4,000, excuse me, 4,995,986. All right, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion just to get it on the table for discussion of the Deerfield Elementary School uh, account number 350400 for a total of $4,995,986. We have a second. 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 All right. <laughs> so I don't have to. Put down. We can have it. Skip disappeared. I hope he comes back. He disappeared, yeah, right? It's not just my screen. No, I think he was having some troubles with his computer. Okay. Um. That is this. A, oh, a three point three five percent. Oh, here he comes. Good. Yep, yeah, from last year. Do we have a um, summary of what those increases are? Like what it is that pushed that up or is it just the usual like step and whatever? Go ahead, Trevor. I, yeah, go yes. ahead. Uh, so, so a couple of the factors there. Um, yes, you're right. A lot of it is, is contractual, the steps and the, you know, the increases that would, were normally, I think it was a 2%, uh, which was negotiated with the teachers. Um, there are some other costs. So we had a 0% increase you know, the year before we were trying to keep everything minimum. Um, in doing so, the two programs that we normally run on a um, <laughs> Thank income you. basis, so that would be um, the early childhood education and the lunch program um, are usually run by revenues. They're revolving funds. So, you know, we take money in for meals and then we pay the staff for that. Well, all last year we, we couldn't charge for any meals and then nobody brought their kids in. So uh so we still had to cover kind of all of that staff because we still had kids we had to teach and all. So a lot of that is was shifted on kind of the general budget. We use some uh, school of choice for that to to cover that. We're hoping that you know eventually um we'll be able to serve lunches this next year and we'll have kids coming back, but we had to budget, 
in a, in a factor that they may not, you know, so we just had to kind of cover it that way. Those were, those were really the issues that kind of drove the budget this year. Um, and we're hoping maybe by the end of the year and with some money from the government, we might be able to kind of reverse that effect, but we just couldn't at the moment. It started out about a 7.3% increase. Um, excuse me. Um, and then they, you know, we just kind of worked and worked at that budget to get it down to, I think, a 3.3, 3, I think, percent, 3.2% uh, increase. So um, that was generally the drivers, was the con contractual stuff and the, the uh, programs that we had to fund because we had no revenue. Are they serving lunch now? Uh, now that not back? yet. St it's still free lunch, uh, I think, for the remainder of the year. Pretty sure. Oh, so they are serving lunch, but they're not charging. Is that what you said? That's correct. Yep, it's all free, but we still had to pay for it. Like they give some money, but not enough to really cover staff and everything. So, because normally kids, you know, kids will buy a lot more and buy hot lunch and that kind of thing. So. They're, they're still getting subsidized by the federal and the state government. Yes. But, but not collecting. Yep. Not enough to, yeah, to cover. Yep. May I ask a question? Go ahead, Jeff. Between the school budgets, these, I, I, every year I hear a different number and it seems to float from, from anywhere from 50% up to like 70%. And that would be the school budget. How much of the, between the schools, how much is comprised of our total budget. So say we have a $15 million budget for the town. Mm -hmm. Schools seem to take up what? Let's see. We're nine, 10,000, I mean, nine, 10 million. Yeah, if you figure in all of the uh, benefits, such as the health insurance, the workers' comp, the unemployment, that they don't take into their budget personally, but it's in our budget, we're looking at somewhere between 70 and 75 percent, right? Everybody. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, just a just a comment because don't get me wrong. I I respect what's happening in the schools and that, but I I've said for years I think we've been that we're overspending on our schools in comparison, and you know I just I I'm sure you. Some of you read the article. Greenfield, their budget, they're spending thirty-eight percent of their total budget. Supposedly, according to Recorder, they're spending thirty-eight percent of their budget on school, on education. And I'm trying to figure out if if Greenfield is spending thirty-eight, then how and why is Deerfield spending whatever magic number people want to plug in there but we just heard you know anywhere from 60 to 70 percent are are is there a better way of doing this do we need to take a closer look at these budgets i don't know but i am i am asked now i think that's an interesting question jeff um i would say i don't know anything about it i don't i don't have the tool to compare Greenfield to Deerfield right now, but I, I do know that the budget and the it, the revenues in those cities are really different and the spending is really different in, in these areas. I mean, even just the population is notably different. Um, I don't know what the proportion of citizens are who have people in school or how that, what the ratio is to students to, you know, non-student families and things like that. but. It's an interesting question. I, I don't think we have the tools to tackle it at the finance committee, but maybe Trevor can speak to. Well, I, I would just say that I, I think, um, I think we, we should look at it. It's always a, you know, it, it is, it is um, a, just a huge part of our budget. And I, you know, being on the school committee for, for those years, I, you know, I looked at a lot of it is contractual and we, we would have to decide to cut programs and education, which I think would hurt us in the long run. But you're right, at some point, 
you know, we may end up having to do that because of, you know, we, we just run out of money and, and ability to pay. I think the difference with Greenfield is that there's probably a lot more state aid just based on the, um, you know, number of students that are maybe on free and reduced lunch and that kind of thing. So the, the and then they may spend a lot more on, you know, like they own their fire department and there's just different dynamics that I think make it different uh, as a part of their overall budget. But, you know, and, and you know, they have, it, it's hard. They, they're always struggling with their budget for the schools and all. I, I don't have the answer, but I think that some of that is just the way they're structured and, um, and maybe just kind of how they're, they're right. getting. Well, the, just the right. Right. and, and I, I agree yeah, with you. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's some. I'm sure that's some of it. But I. I guess the reason why I'm asking is is the school budgets for years now have have been driving our overall budget, and what happens there it, it affects the what we have left to spend on the other departments, yep. and that's why we've in the past kind of kicked the can down the road on some of these other projects because we couldn't afford them. And as we're hearing now that we have several big projects that we're gonna need to fund one way or the other. And once again, I, I would hate to see it just thrown all on the taxpayers as far as property taxes. I would hope that we'd be able to come up with some type of plan, some type of compromise so we all share in this burden, especially when we're trying to go forward with some of these bigger projects coming down the road. Sorry. I, I think a Cambius, yeah, go ahead, Jim. I think a useful, and then skip. A more useful datum rather than percentage of the town budget would be uh, per student. So you know, Greenfield might have a lower percentage simply because they're spending more money on other stuff or whatever. But if we, if we wanted to compare our spending to other departments spending it seems like budget divided by students would be a good rule of thumb rough estimate right uh is there any way we could find that out yeah trevor i think can answer that because you can do that with the state and i didn't mean to throw greenfield in there as a benchmark to compare because that can, can be misleading but if you, you if you check the state data files and that stuff, I think you'll find that Deerfield, uh, uh, as far as student ratio, is up there substantially as far as cost per student. It Trevor is. may be able to answer that a little bit better. He's been following that. Yeah, definitely. That I mean, the town of Deerfield definitely pays you know well and above what is required. You know, to, you, there's there's always in a, a state requires you to pay a certain amount for educating kids. We the town of Deerfield has always invested heavily in the education of the kids, and so our our I think our if you looked at Deerfield Elementary, it might be around. Uh, this is just off the top of my head, just over fourteen thousand a child, and um, Frontier probably is in the. I want to say 16 or 17. I could get those data, get that data for you. It is on, um, if you go to clear.gov, um, there, there's a website where you can kind of zero out the different towns and if, how much for education for kids and all, but um, I could get those numbers for you. We definitely, pay, we spend more than most. And, and so that's why, you know, people are attracted to our school system because they want to, you know, so that drives people to want to come and live here and buy a house or build a house or, there, there's a cost and you, you got to weigh kind of a lot to it if you just kind of cut school budgets down to like minimum um you start losing that draw and getting people building in your home you know building in your town it's it's a it's a balance but it's a tough balance you're right we have to look at it we should look at it more and find ways to try and level that playing field because jeff is right it, it, it swallows up any money that we ever have you know we only grow 300 thousand a year I think a little over 300,000 a year in in growth so um, it, every year that's swallowed up by the school is just based on staff and insurance and all of that so we just never really can get ahead skip you had a comment yes uh, the thing that everybody is forgetting is how chapter 78 is 
distributed in the budget. Uh, you don't see anything in the elementary school budget that says Chapter 70 aid, and that's at least a million dollars. You don't see anything in Frontier, and yet Frontier's budget has been reduced by the Chapter 70 monies that they get. So if you looked at Frontier's budget, which I believe is about $5 million, uh, our, our share of it is about $5 million. And I'm not sure how many kids we've got in there, but to that, you're going to have to add some for Chapter 70 to come up with a per, per student basis. If you look to Greenfield, I think, although I wouldn't want to bet on it, the uh, I believe their budget is approximately in the neighborhood of $20 million, 17,000 students. So that comes out to about 11,000 per student. But you're going to have to take a look and see whether any of the Chapter 70 aid is in that. So it's difficult to look at the figures that show up either in our budgets, just between Frontier and the elementary school, to come up with a per capita cost. So. Greenfield's tax rate's a lot higher than ours, too. Uh, well, there's, they're about $23, $24. They can't go much higher. Yeah. But then again, they were $20, $21 when we were 10 So they're double hour. They were double hours. Now they're only one and a half times what ours is. Any other discussion? I guess... I guess the only question is, though, and, and we've talked about this before, and Skip just pointed out that uh, with, with the tax base and the percentage increasing every year, at what point do we hit the wall? Uh, is the right. model that we're using right now, is it sustainable? And we can carry this on, but for how many years? And uh, the other projects in town, are they going to be continued to be ignored because we can't afford them? Let me just interject one other thing in this, Jeff. Uh, one thing that we don't even think about is the cost of the fire department and the cost of the water department. And if you add those into our budgets, yeah, and then look at and then look at the total number of dollars. It's not sixteen dollars tax rate. It's closer to eighteen dollars in the tax rate. That is correct. Yeah. Also reduces the percentage that is to the schools, right? Mm Anybody else? Go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say, uh, on the uh, at this point, though, what options do we have? Can we ask the school to submit a revised budget again, or are we just basically in a position of having a fait accompli here, take it or leave it? I think the schools have done, you know, a, a pretty good job, all considering, you know. The, based on last year not increasing at all and you know other than what was contractual trying to deal with a crazy year I, I mean I think they put through about as good a budget as they can and, and certainly there's probably a half a percent there somewhere that you know they're kind of hedging because they've got they just don't know what th this year is going to bring um, and and what kind of help there will come from the federal government so I think over the next couple of years with these with this help that we're going to see from the federal government, I think it'll even out a bit. And, um, you know, we won't see any large increases in the next couple of years. I think it's, um, you know, we always should look at ways to kind of save money and, 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 and ask, do we want to keep, you know, continuing to educate our kids at this level? Uh, I would recommend we do, but, um, but you're right. At some point, something's got to give. And um, there's just not a lot of new programs that they introduce. Um, you know, luckily they have AP and capstone programs for, for the kids that, you know, 
uh, want to really strive there. Um, I, I'm just, I, I think with the help from the federal government over the next couple of years, you know, I think we're pretty safe and not seeing a large increase in budgets over, over the next couple of years. And could they take another percent, uh, half a percent out? If they had to cut a person, they probably could do that. But I think that they've put together a very fair budget for this year based on not increasing last year. Although in response to your question, Jim, yes, we can go mm -hmm. back to them and ask them to look at it again. We can re recommend a lower amount. That too. That chance that it'll get to the town meeting, but. Well, and if we're looking at that kind of cuts to services, I would look at what other services in town could we cut additionally, you know? So that we're making a value-based decision to cut because you can't cut the budget without cutting the service and oh uh, my well we're not cutting the budget I'm, I'm just saying what could we do and and yeah. what is reasonable to do or what would likely pass muster with town money uh right. right yeah we can request we can so it's a different budget um but i yeah i think it sounds like we're there's a consensus that it's unrealistic in this year <laughs> I kind of feel like 3.35% is not irrational given the the year that we've had and the consideration for the food. And I just recall it. Sort but. of averaged it over, if, if you average it over last year or whatever, or whatever, that's actually a lower increase than it had been. <laughs> oh, because it was zero last year. Yeah. Yeah. But is there any way to make it clear that this kind of increase is not sustainable to the school? I mean, I'm sure, Trevor, they're aware of it at some level, but I'm just worried at some point we're going to start bumping up against the need for property tax increases and that how much of that is going to pass the town meeting. Go ahead, Casey. Um, the best place to do that is during their budget prep process. And they have a series of budget prep meetings in the same way that we do. When do they generally have those? They've had them since January, right, Trevor? Yeah. yeah. It's on their, their website. Yeah, we've had hearings and stuff, kind of like we do. So it's at the regular school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right. and it goes for several months. Yeah. Typically, at the end of the budgeting process for the schools, they have invited finance committees uh, to attend uh, a meeting so that they can go over and answer questions. I don't think they did that this year. And, and they didn't yeah, uh -huh. yeah we, we had this year. Uh, at least at Deerfield Elementary did. We invited everybody, but no, no one really came. I didn't see any I didn't invitation. Get an invitation. In my way. Are you sure? Really? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, the Deerfield I Elementary. I did I not yes. get an invitation. I I think I did, and I and I wouldn't have even considered squeezing another meeting into my evening. So I, it's possible I didn't, but. I remember being, you know, some talk about that. You know, yeah, let me check budget, into that and make, make sure because if, if you didn't, that's a huge uh, faux pas on our part, but I, I was almost sure um, we did. So I'll, I'll double check. That. Yeah, I would have been all over it. I, I really oh, I'm so sorry. I'm yeah, positive I did not get an invitation. And I think it's safe to say that we haven't seen anything from Frontier either to come to a Frontier meeting and talk about Frontier's budget. Yeah, unfortunately. I wonder if I'm something. So we talked about it in finance committee a couple months back, and there was a, um, a school committee meeting coming up, but then um, it ended up being the same <laughs> finance committee meeting or something. I've lost track a little bit. But... Hi, John. Hi. So we are talking about the Deerfield Elementary School budget. Um, 
which is up. We so we have a motion on the table, but we haven't. We're in the discussion phase, and they're up three point three five percent over last year. And that includes a two and a half percent step increase, or two percent step increase across the board, too. By the way, uh, not step, but uh, cola. cola. Together with a step increase that goes from three to six percent. Does anybody have any further comments on the school budget or suggestions? Does anybody want to? I know the suggestions I've heard is at the beginning of next year's budget cycle to go to them and clearly express the concern, probably um, not just the budget cycle, but also the contract negotiation cycle whenever the contract is up for renegotiation. Um, the concern about the contractual increases and um, how that affects our prop two and a half position. Um. It, one thing that I'd like to point out, and I've raised this issue before to no avail, is that under state law, and has been for the past, better part of the past decade, towns have the right to appoint one of someone from the town to represent the town at contract negotiations, teacher contract negotiations, and they haven't done so. So there's a member from the school committee who goes, right? Well, they're, they're, yes. I'm talking about somebody who's not a member of the school committee. I don't have a feel for where they are in the contract cycle. Do you, does anybody know when it's up for negotiation again? Um, if I remember right, we had negotiated, we were at a standstill, well, this is with the union. Um, mm -hmm. We were at a standstill for a long time. Uh, then just before COVID hit, we, um, we settled on a, I believe on a one-year contract. I could be wrong about this. Um, and then I believe they're up again. I think I, if, if memory serves me right, they only got a one year, year extension to the contract. I could be wrong about that. I don't think it was a three year because it took so long that we ended up just negotiating again and, and, and we did a, a 2% um, because we also negotiated to end the large uh, payouts um, for any new teachers coming on. You know, when people retire, uh, we, we get hit with all the sick time. It can be a, up to a $20,000 payout that we just don't know what's coming in a budget year. So we, we ended that um, uh, in exchange for a 2%. And it won't pay off for years because, you know, people have to cycle through. But uh, but at least we, we were able to negotiate that out and um, for any new people coming in. So I think with that negotiation, there was only one, you know, one year extension to the contract. So I believe it's up again and ready to, to do, and I'll, I'll be off that committee. So, you know, I would recommend somebody from the, from this board, you know, join. Cause it could be a school committee member still. And then also um, an, another person as, as Skip said from town that could happy to sit on it. And uh, they'd love that, that help. The last person I remember from town serving in that capacity was Gordon Oaks. And I believe that was in 2008, because I was on the school the school committee and I was also on the, the negotiating team and Gordon came, as well as one member from each of the other towns too. Correct. Is it the same contract for Deerfield 
for the oh it's all of union 38 but it's no, not, it's, not. It's, it's not it's not it's each individual town we negotiate together oh, gosh. And do a contract together but it's because we're not a real you know union it's I not guess. a region right region. or not a region yeah. that's right it's not yeah. regional but it's a union so each town does the same contract but it is for a separate contract and then there's frontier and then frontier separate. is separate from that that's even. right Okay. So if you look at the, the uh, Union 38 contracts and you read them, the only difference is town of Conway, town of Deerfield, mm -hmm. town of Sunderland, town of Waitley. So Skip, you said that the town can appoint somebody or is it? Is that That's correct. I believe the selectmen have the authority to appoint someone Is that something you would be interested in doing? Sure. Casey, uh, you must have handled that in Nashville at some point as well, didn't you? Appointment to the school committee or contract to the negotiations? Contract negotiations. Um, not for the school. That actually went through the school committee because of the regional agreement. Only school committee members were participants in that they did come back and report to the select board progress on those but not functionally any of the details mm -hmm. um and usually finance and the select board had the same meetings during the budget process so yep. that generally got to both committees at the same time I can, you know, check with Darius and find out when, when that is set to schedule, you know, start up again and, and let you guys know. That'd be great. Sure. We'll be Wait, do you want a motion on that? We have a motion. Oh, a uh, motion on um, Skip. Motion to appoint Skip as the coordinator to represent let's... the finance committee and recommend to the board of selectmen that they appoint him. Okay, let's hold that. Um, thought because we have a motion on the table so let's vote the the budget and then when we're done with the budget we'll we'll look at that so um any other comments on the budget i don't like it but we have to pay it all right so we have a motion and seconded for the deerfield elementary school budget Number three hundred fifty four hundred for four million nine hundred ninety five thousand nine hundred eighty six dollars. Any further discussion? Nope. Not hearing any. We will do our roll call vote. Jeff Upton. I'm going to abstain. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Allison Vanderbilden. Aye. All right. I have a five zero one. So that passes. Can, before we move on, can I just ask Brenda for information for the next meeting? If you take a look at the school budget, just so that we all have an idea of what we're looking at, can you take that five million dollars or whatever the school budget is and break it down so that you know, it says from town appropriations or whatever, school choice, et cetera, et cetera, just so that we see it. Um, I actually have that. Yeah. Hang on. I had it someplace, but I can't find it. Brenda, you're still muted. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. It, it did come by email. Yes. So can you guys see this? The very bottom line on the screen, total expenditures is 5.7 million for uh, 5 million essentially that is out of our general fund budget. And then you can see school choice, school lunch, title one, whatever else. The efforts are the help from the federal government. But it also, it's not showing you chapter 78, which no, you we had not. some place. You're right. Well, the chapter 78 goes into the um, town yeah. budget, into the general fund. Right. Okay. 
So you're that. looking, Skip, for that breakdown of that $5 million, how much will be covered by Chapter 70? Yeah. Okay. I don't have that. Uh, actually, you do. You've got it someplace. If you look in the... Uh, it, it's an estimate at this point in time. It's it's the state aid uh, cherry sheet. Um, I'm getting to that. Uh, chapter 70 is listed at a million one hundred and twenty three thousand. So in other words, the three million nine hundred thousand dollars, what uh, comes out of the, the towns. Approximately. Right. So basically they're paying for 22% basically. The state is. Yes. Yeah. And if you back to the Greenfield issue, you look to Greenfield, I think you're going to find that they're give or take, but they're pretty close to 50%, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. All right. John, you're going to make a motion. Yes, I'll make a motion that we authorize the uh, recommend to the Board of Selectmen that they appoint uh, Skip as an additional representative to the negotiating committee. We have a second. I'll second it. Any discussion? I guess my question is, have we ever done this before? And okay, do we do this every year? Do we always? Okay. They do it every Nobody, three years. Last time, long time ago when I was a selectman, I was on that negotiating committee. And yep. you'd normally negotiate a three-year contract. Right. And the problem is that school committee members want to champion the cause of school, which is great. And the problem is that sometimes you don't get somebody who champions the cause of being frugal. Mm hmm and I think that Skip would do an outstanding job of being frugal to say, hey, look, let's use a little bit of common sense. We don't have to turn around and ask for all the money from so that none of the town departments can get anything else. So just to put a plug in for Skip, too, I think he would he would be very frugal, but he also is very concerned with the quality of the schools and the quality of the education. Um, well, not a part the of the entire school teacher. So. Yeah. He's a very fair person. Yeah, absolutely. yeah I agree. Yep. Hooray for Skip. <laughs> so, so can I can I look behind to see whether the knives are out? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all on you. <laughs> all right. Any further discussion? All right. Roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalvin, aye. Skip Olmstead. I'm glad you abstain. Don Paturik. Aye. Ali Vandervelden. Um, I will also abstain because it feels like a new and weird precedent for me that I just don't understand enough. But all right, I don't need, to, I don't need that to call my abstention, but it. But um, can I just repeat? I know that Jack made the motion. Who was the second on it? I second it. Jeff Allie. did. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You caught up, Allie? I think so. Okay. Uh, what's next? We're doing the next one? So the next one would be the Frontier Regional School, and that's actually broken out between the school portion and transportation. But okay. uh, we'll do the regional school by itself first, and that is 312-5400. And the dollar total on that is 4 million. $16,567. So move. I'll make a motion to move the Frontier Regional School budget number account 312-5400 for a total of $4,016,567. Second. I'll make a motion to 
Second. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, Brenda, do you have handy how much their total budget increase percentage? I don't happen to have that okay. right offhand. I can certainly try to find it. Um, the uh, Deerfield portion of that went up 4.32% between the two budgets together, the, the school and transportation. Okay. Any discussion? I would just like to say, uh, and I'm not anti-school by any stretch of the imagination because I am pro-education and I realize that uh, this past year or two, uh, the schools and the, the uh, staff and obviously administration been up against the wall. I think they've done a pretty decent job but I still think uh, that these increases are a little high for what the town facing overall. And it's not just the schools. Once again, I'm looking at the overall town budget that includes the schools, but also includes all the other departments in the wants and needs of the citizens here. And I just don't see how we can continue to sustain, you know, a uh, high three or four, four something percent increases for the schools. That's all. I don't have the uh, increase, but I could show the totals. I think their their final, the fund draft budget is um, 11 million eight oh seven four fifty nine. And uh, the total after all circuit breaker and ESSER two and school choice is twelve million seven eighty five eighteen. But I don't have last year's budget. So this one on my budget sheet looks like one that the last two years had a pretty minimal increase. Yes. So I, I mean, it's similar to the elementary school. We're looking at average increases. Yeah. Go ahead, Casey. I just want to remind everybody, um, I've had several conversations, the other town administrators in the district and with Darius. And one of the biggest challenges they've been facing is really dealing with the COVID impacts. And so he did warn us that would have an impact on the budget. And so I had mentioned that I think months ago because that conversation was fairly fresh during at least one meeting of the budget uh, of the finance committee on the budgets. And that was reiterated a couple of times, once in email, but just for everybody to sort of get a framework, they're facing a different type of impact than we are, but the impacts that they also have relate to managing staff and some of the challenges around teaching that required additional equipment and such. They did get grants and the town actually utilized some of our CARES Act money to assist them. Um, some of the guidance changed with FEMA, but ultimately in terms of what you could claim, particularly for the school, but ultimately it was a heavy lift for them. And Darius had warned us last year it was gonna be a heavy lift, but he tried to mitigate what he could. And to everyone's credit in, in the finance committee group and with Brenda, the conservative numbers that everyone used to build the budget for FY21 really made it possible for us to not face cuts. Other towns had to cut. So seeing this kind of an increase, it, it didn't necessarily surprise me. I don't like it any more than anyone else, but functionally COVID did have an impact in a way that we did have to see come across as a monetary change. And so that's, that's just the caveat I would remind everyone to keep in their back of their minds. It, it was a 2.97% yeah, as a result. Less than like, he initially talked to us about. That's the total I would like you know that he did some creative yes. cutting. That was the, the initial, initial percentage that I saw for 
the initial percentage, and correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor, the initial percentage that Darius talked to the town administrators about for the elementary schools, depending on which one it was, was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 5% to 7% for the elementary school and somewhere between four and 8% for FRS. But like I said, he, he, did, he worked creatively with the funds that he had. Yep. Wanted to kind of put up, that was the, the narrative they had for Frontier's total budget. Okay, thanks. Yep. I feel like for both of the schools, there's an awful lot that's driven by state regulation that you have to have this program and you have to have that program and you have to have a person who does this and a person who does that. And um, It's true for almost every budget element we've discussed over the past two, two months. Yeah. Anybody else have comments on the frontier budget? Stop sharing here. Nobody has anything to say. <laughs> Are you ready to vote on it? I'm not hearing anybody say anything. All right. So if, if nobody's going to say anything, go ahead and take a vote. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what, where I'm getting. All right. So we have moved and seconded for Frontier Regional School 312-5400 for $4,016,567. Is there any further comment? No. Roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Abstain. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. John Pachurik, aye. Allie Vandervelden, aye. That's five zero one. Frontier Regional School passes. So our next budget is the Frontier Regional Transportation. Do we have a motion? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'll make a motion for the Frontier Regional Transportation account number 315-5800 for a total of $122,920. Second. Brenda, you were going to say something? Oh, no, that's good. I was just going to give an account number, but... We found it. <laughs> you did. Turn the yep. page. Any discussion? They seem to have kept their costs well under control. All right. Any further discussion? No, just can somebody remind me who just seconded? I'm, I got myself mixed up here. Jeff, Jeff made the motion. Who was the second? Yeah. I don't remember. Um, no, I'll yeah. second it if you need a second. I made the motion. Yeah. I seconded it. Okay. Oh, John. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Just a quick question. Nope. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, the increased rhyme or reason for that? Uh, I, the, well, the only thing I could state was that I know that Darius had negotiated, you know, really hard on this um, transportation, you know, on the um, um, contract and, and, you know, on the bid and everything like that, they, they've had a hard time because you couldn't really, even though you were running five or six students in a bus, you couldn't really, they can't, we were always like, well, could you get smaller buses? It doesn't really matter because you have to have a bus that's large enough in case you need them. And so they really doesn't save any money by getting a smaller bus, but um, they really negotiated pretty pretty hard and I, th I thought that they had worked out a pretty good deal uh, consi all considering 
you know, last right. year, they still had to keep their employees on and all of that. So it wasn't really much savings. I was wondering if some of this was just COVID related though, uh, Trevor, yeah. I guess was more, Could more be. of a question. Could be. Okay. Anything. Go ahead, Casey. <laughs> She's looking at me like, don't open your mouth. Um, <laughs> no, I was just going to say one of the things that continued throughout COVID was all the busing companies, it wasn't just here, were required to continue to pay their leases. They were paying unemployment for their employees. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor, we have to have a seat per child in the school system that is on a bus route, correct? Yeah, no matter what. Yeah. Okay, so that's part of the reason. I'm good. Okay. Roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Paturic. John? He looks frozen. Aye. Oh, good. <laughs> Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Aye. All right. Six zero zero. That passes. Franklin Tech next. Count number 320-5410. And the total of that is $323,023. We have a motion. So moved. We have a second. I'll second it. All right. Skip move, Jeff second for Franklin Tech. Any discussion? John, if you're talking, you're muted. You weren't supposed to tell him. <laughs> Julie, as, as host, can't you unmute people? I'm not the actual, I think Alex can ask him to. There. We still can't hear you. John, are you talking? No, Shake your head up and down. I'm not, this computer went to fluey, so I don't know. Oh, okay. So I'm going to try resetting the whole computer. Oh, no, we can hear you now. I think you're Again. good. Yep. So, so did you have some? My computer says no upcoming meetings today. I've been fighting this since quarter of five this afternoon with the wrong uh, codes going in and stuff like that. For some reason, I never got a copy of the new codes that you had to put in. So I'm sitting there with a meeting of one, doing absolutely nothing, twiddling my thumb, calling Julie to find out if we had a meeting, calling the tongue. Oh, gosh. I'm not home, so I wasn't any help. <laughs> so anyway, you got to move this thing out. Got to. I'm happy with the budget. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Um, Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pachurk. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Six zero zero. That passes. So we get Franklin Tech Capital. Cap number three two zero fifty eight hundred for a total of $17,697. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, I, I have a, a naive question. What is the, what is our contribution for Franklin Tech Capital for? Ooh. Go ahead, Trevor. Oh. The, uh, so over the last several years, this is a, 
I get it's it's paid in installments, but they went through um, since the building had been built um, in the 70s. They hadn't done really any maintenance at all. They went through and changed all the overhead doors. They changed all a lot of the windows out. They did some other other uh, improvements, I think, to the fields and uh, some other things that just were, you know, were sorely lacking. So it was mainly just maintenance to the building and, and bring things up to speed. Okay, thank you. Might have been a roof too. I can't remember if the roof yes. was redone. Any other discussion? No. Uh, roll call vote. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. That passes six zero zero. That's the last one. That is the last school budget. Okay. Um, if we want to go back to the wastewater treatment plant, um, we had discussed the salaries and the expense, but we had not discussed the debt portion of that. Um, I have that in tab nine. What's the account number? Uh, there is no account number. It just says www.tp.debt. Okay. I had that behind the sewer expense behind the payroll. Everybody Everybody found, found it? it? Find it okay? Brenda. Yes? Is that sewer debt service? Yes. That's the one? Sewer yes. debt? Correct. Okay, service. Okay. So the total um, on this sheet should be $488,841. Um, I don't know, do you want to take a motion first? Yeah, let's take a motion. I'll move. I'll second it. So what, what, are, we, what are we voting on, I guess? Could you explain what we're voting on, Brenda? Uh, right. It, uh, we've got a motion and seconded. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I went through this um, with uh, James Rivers from DBC, DPC, and him and I looked at this and felt that uh, this budget could sustain the payoff of the clarifier. Um, so we budgeted 75% uh, of that in this budget and the interest on that. Um, so 415,841 would be the payoff portion for the wastewater treatment plant budget. And um, then the rest of that, of course, was in the general fund budget, which you approved earlier. Um, then I figured what, what interest on the bigger project would be because there's no payment that's going to be due in fiscal 22. Um, now, with that said, since we did this calculation, we've now discovered that uh, we're going to have to take on either two or 2.5 million more in debt for this fiscal year. I believe, based on the interest rates we've gotten on two other loans that we've refinanced this month, um, that this 68,000, which is 75% of that, is going to more than cover the additional 2.5 million uh, the interest on that. So, um, and, and I'll tell you why, because I figured a 1.2% interest rate and the interest rate we got on those two loans was 0.4%. Uh, so I think we're, we're, we're more than good. Um, now, since then, we've also come up with some other issues, and I, Trevor can probably speak to that. Mm. Um, and maybe yep. I'll just leave it at that. Trevor, if you want to talk about the additional issues, some of you are aware of this already. 
what, Julie, would you want me to? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, so we have gone out to bid, uh, or and we and we've got the bid back. We're moving forward with a large project. So we have that that moving forward. We're waiting for um, Lisa to look over the contract, sign that. Hopefully, get that project moving by the next couple of weeks. Um, so that project's moving forward. We've finished the camera work mostly on all the pipes in town. And uh, we have a few that are, are, are really in catastrophic condition, really. Uh, we have a, a, a section from kind of the bot, sort of where DA's Albany Road is, kind of wrapping around by the athletic fields. And then that pipe heads out to our plant. That pipe carries like 95 or 90, 80% of, um, you know, all the wastewater from Old Deerfield. So that, that pipe is in really, really bad shape. Um, there is also the pipes heading up the road to um, Eagle Brook, um, Pine Nook Road that are also in really bad shape. Um, those kind of need to be open cut, you know, removed and, and new pipe laid. There's also a lot of uh, other areas of town that really need, um, let me just share my screen here a second, just so you guys can get a visual. Um, let me just go back to this and share a screen. Grab that. So is this stuff you think is going to be funded this year? Well, let me tell you uh, so a little bit about this. And this is where I'd love some input from you all. Um, if you can see this figure from 800 here or 8,000, this manhole down to about 804 is um, kind of right in the middle of DA's uh, campus. I've been talking with uh, Deerfield Academy, and uh, just today I got um, approval for them to uh, pay for all of this pipe replacement and repair to about 8,004. Um, if, if we can complete the work this summer while no kids are on campus because they're not having any su summer programs this year, um, they, they would pay for this in full. So they would, we would create a gift account. Um, we'd go out to bid uh, either on an emergency or urgent, you know, a bid process um, and, and probably two projects, one to line the pipe and one to cut and replace the pipe. Um, then they will, uh, they will gift that money to the town and, and we don't need to appropriate any money from the town. They will just pay for that work in full. It's um, a probably, I think it was somewhere around $375,000, uh, if I have that number correct. Um, in that range, those were rough, rough estimates. So they're willing to do that if we can get that going. So I, I was going to instruct Dave Prickett to go ahead and uh, prepare the bids for that work um, and just get that done this summer. Um, this is really, th this area in the red is pretty catastrophic. So. Um, if we could get that going as a separate project, we would just kind of wash our hands and they would take care of that. It will leave this section here that I think we should do this year, um, just because I, I could show you pictures that they're, they're in pretty bad shape. Um, and again, this takes pretty much all of, all of the town, you know, all of the town. Um, so, but my question for you is kind of, should we take on some some debt and do the rest of this section right here while the guys are down there we would do it in separate bids anyways but or you know at a later time but just they just really wanted this done before their kids came back after it's down in the field they really don't care you know they care and that it doesn't back up but you know it's not interfering with their their work um the other section of town which is really tough is is over here going up pine nook road my thoughts kind of talking with Kevin and Dave Prickett on this is that I would like to get in um, Ty and Bond to do a more of a study from the bottom of this hill all the way to the top to figure out what the road, the road's in horrible shape too. And Kevin's been waiting to try and, you know, save up some, some money from chapter 90 to really redo the road, but it needs, it needs, um, you know, shoring up along the brook. It needs new guardrails. It's going to need all new sewer top to bottom. 
So I thought maybe if we took a year and plan that project so that we get past um, uh, either one or two cycles of chapter 90 that Kevin already has figured and uh, save some money aside and then look for grant money, infrastructure grants, anything we can do to try and pay for the road rehabilitation up here and the sewer work uh, combined. So plan on doing that at a separate time. Because even if this failed right now, it's not backing up really into anyone's home. You know, we, we could put a pipe and bypass it. Um, but down here at, at Deerfield, it backs up because of the, you know, the lowness of the land, it backs up into their whole campus, which would just be a nightmare. So my thought was to, was to accept this gift from DA to do this work, um, go out to bid and do this second part. And then um, the only other thing I don't have numbers on is, is South Deerfield itself. Are there any pipes in there that are, you know, also catastrophic? Should we group those two things in together? Or should we ask for a debt exclusion? You know, this whole thing in Old Deerfield is about $3 million, you know, combined, even DA's work included. Um, you know, should we go for an appropriation at, a, an, at this annual town meeting or wait till next annual town meeting or do a special town meeting? When should we ask for an appropriation to do this sewer pipe work? Um, I just wasn't really sure how long we can let this other half of pipe go. And, um, you know, I'm not so worried about this. We could do this in a year or so when we plan it out. And I don't have the numbers in exactly on South Deerfield yet. So I thought we would move forward, allow Deerfield to pay for this and do this work. Um, and then kind of meet with you all, our working group, anybody else who wants to get involved and kind of lay out a plan for how we should tackle these others. You know, the rest of this stuff in purple all needs to be done too. Uh, if you look back at the bottom here, it's proposed cure in place piping. So none of it has to be dug up. It just needs to be done in place and it can be done anytime. It's the red stuff that needs to be dug up. So, and we're just waiting for all this detail for South Deerfield. So I thought we, again, we would just go through let DA go, get a group together, decide how we should tackle this bigger project together and when we should get some debt exclusion for that or how we should go ahead. So that's kind of what I know right now. Um, so happy to take any questions or. Do we need a town meeting vote to float a bond for this? Uh, if we did, if we did, yes, I think we do need a town meeting vote if we were going to tackle this stuff. Yes. Um, the, the section in DA, we do not because they're going to pay for it in full. Forever? Yes. Question? Do you have a price you gave uh, a price to take care of the DA section? Do you have a price of the other area red section uh, for do. the town of Deerfield? I that do. would be Let question number one. And question, go ahead. I, I do, yes. Um, um, I, I don't, can you see, does my screen still show the figure? Yes. Okay, let uh, me no. share, and, can't. Uh, share one other thing for you. You were showing us a spreadsheet there for a minute. Oh, yes. Okay, good. So okay. this this spreadsheet, I can email this all to you. So this is Old Deerfield. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, it shows the 8,000 at the top here. I know it's small. Um, I'm just going to enlarge this a bit. Uh, the, these are the, um, the manholes and kind of you know, what it needs for pipe, whether it's cure in place and open cut. So you can follow that. I can send you both diagrams, one the diagram and this list. This will show you what needs to be cut in place and what could be, you know, uh, cut out and dug out and replaced. Um, and then below, so it has sections of this and we could break that out. Like I said, I think it was like 375 was Deerfields and then we still have, you know, a good section to do in that spot as well. And then these are all the, um, these are all the pipes and I think the, and the manholes are listed down here. Um, and then, so this is kind of the pipe work and this is the total. So this is open cut pipe replacement. We need about 1.6 million cure in place is about 800. And then this is the open and cut manhole replacement and then just epoxy lining rehabilitation. There's just a lot more of them. So it's more money. So this is, Old Deerfield, should, include, including all of the um, upper pine nook. I, 
I would like it if you could email that to us. Uh, of course. Yes. Yep. I'll do that. So you guys can look it all over and, you know, get an understanding of what we have for, for work. And as soon as I get South Deerfield, I'll forward that on to you as well. Thank you, Trevor. Yep. Uh, well, second question follow up. And this this might be the white elephant in the room. I'm not sure, but uh, have the private schools been approached as yes. far as any any assistance with this huge project that we're undertaking here? And yes. has there been any progress? Well, again, DA is willing to pay for that section of the pipe to get it done. Um, I've not heard. I've had meetings with the rest of the schools and have not had a um, offer of payment yet. But we we were actually, before this project came up, we were looking at what do we do with that plant? And I think, you know, they're waiting to kind of get an idea of, are we going to rehabilitate that plant? Are we going to shut it down and pipe it to, you know, force main it to South Deerfield? What are the costs for all that? So Dave's working on that budget. They, uh, Deerfield Academy offered to pay for that uh, study in full. So they've been, Dave's been working on that project um, funded by DA to kind of get an idea of, you know, how much does it cost to, to pump the force main that to South Deerfield. And I think once we got that figured together, we were going to sit down, you know, as a group and see if there's any help that they can offer or what they feel like they could offer. Um, and then, you know, and then, bring it to the community and decide, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to just fix the plant, which would certainly, I think just based on my initial looks, um, it's going to be less expensive to fix the plant that's there in the short term. Um, it's going to be a lot more expensive to force main that to South Deerfield in the, in the short term because of, um, you know, having to go down the road, um, cross over five and 10 cross over the railroad tracks to tie into the big intersection that brings down to the main plant. Um, you know, we just look at it 50 years of maintaining that plant versus, you know, so we're looking at that balance and I want everybody to kind of be involved in that discussion. We just aren't there yet. So as soon as we do, I will. Um, so what, I, what we've gotten so far is DA was willing to pay for this section in full. And then um, I've got no commitment from the other schools at the moment. Um, may I ask what what's the normal replacement cycle for these pipes? Good question. I, I don't have all the answers. Generally, if if we go ahead and, and replace these pipes or cure them, we're probably good for another 50 years or more. Um, so it would be better to handle it as a capital project rather than trying to build a, a replacement line item, a pipe replacement line item into the, the budget. Well, right. We were, so initially when we looked at doing this sewer worth, the $30 million ticket, you know, we, we originally looked at or 30 something million dollars. We were talking every year we would do a couple hundred thousand in, in um, pipe work, you know, over the, over the 10 year span. Uh, we hadn't started that yet. Uh, we The first task was to kind of get all of this camera to see what kind of condition we're in. And we just finished that. So um, you know, a lot of this stuff could be done like that. We could just say, hey, look, every year we're going to do so many thousand, uh, you know, so many, so many pipes, so many, so much thousand in pipe and go out to bid every year and over 10 or 15 years, we, we get, we get them all done. Um, you know, I think that instead of doing it kind of all at once, I think the open and cut could be done anytime and, you know, they're not as critical. The ones in the red there are, and I don't think there's a lot in, in South Deerfield that are in the red. It's really, Pine Nook Road is, is really bad, and then this one section out to the plant is bad. But other than that, we're, you know, we can take our time a little bit with. So if they replace the plant with this um, pumping it down to South Deerfield, does yep. the entire, does all the piping structure in old Deerfield stay the same? And then you just take it from where the plant was? Yes, that, that's correct. Yep, I was wondering that too. Are, are we replacing pipes that were just going to go away anyways? And he said, no, you'll always have those uh, collection pipes coming to the plant. And then they're either going to, you know, we're either going to treat it there or we're going to turn it into a force main and, and put new pipes and pipe it out to uh, South Deerfield. 
which I think is still a kind of a pipe dream. <laughs> I would love to do it, but uh, it's going to be a lot of money. And without, you know, a mass works grant or something like that, it's just a lot of money to take on up front in the long term, 50 years. I think it makes sense to do because you don't have a um, an operator and all the permitting and all the maintenance of this old plant right on a flood river. I mean, it just, but it's just going to be a lot of money to run pipe that far. And it's not like you can tie into it because it's going at high velocity. So where everything in sewer is just kind of like gravity fed and slow moving, this pipe is going to be going by, you know, hundred miles an hour. I say that, you know, I don't know how fast, but under pressure. So you can't just like tie in somebody's pipe to it. So that's kind of what I know for sewer at the moment. I was going to move ahead with, you know, accepting DA's gift and, and being very thankful and, and just kind of get going on that and then come to you and say, look, we think it makes sense to do this one section out to the plant this year uh, and maybe a couple of pipes in South Deerfield where Kevin's got a, he's, I guess the water department is going to do some stuff in, on graves and Eastern Ave or some, some and Cross Street. So there's going to be some work already. And before they pave, we thought, well, maybe we should do the open and cut stuff down there this year before they go and pave that section. Mm -hmm. But I don't have all those answers put together yet. So as soon as I do, I'll bring that to you all and decide whether it's worth kind of taking a small bond and doing those little sections first and then figure out how to deal with Pine Nook and do the rest as we can. Kind of what my thoughts are now but and and i think no no matter what the um decision is on these new projects um we felt that we could take out that loan and it would it would come due in fiscal 23 so there'd be nothing that would change for fiscal 22 in regards to all that Trevor, I'd like to give you a couple of thoughts on my end. Please. And first of all, I think you're going in the right direction. The uh, part with uh, Deerfield Academy offering to pay the 350000 or whatever it is, is great. I would like to thank them for that. I think the offer that they have of doing the engineering work and paying for that is great, too. And I think we need more information. And if you happen to get the information by summer or fall time, then we can consider a special town meeting because this thing is big enough that I think we need answers before we can make logical conclusions. I agree. Thank you. I think you're going in the right direction. Thank you. I, I, would, I would agree that I would like not to try to bring this to the annual town meeting. I don't think we're going to be prepared for it. I agree. So even if we had to go to a special town meeting where the only thing that was on the agenda was the sewer system, then I'm fine with that. Okay. That's good. Thank you for that direction. Trevor, can you stop sharing for a sec so oh, we can yes, I'm sorry. see everybody at the same time? Yep, absolutely. I just find it easier to, to look at yes. everybody when we're talking. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Oversharing. Yep. So my feeling is that I, I agree that we probably aren't going to be ready by this town meeting. Um, I would be very open to doing that extra piece that the town is responsible for from the point of view that one, we're already going to have somebody down there working right next to it in that open and cut replace, whatever you call that. Um, and so like if the goal of Deerfield Academy replacing that piece this summer is partially so it doesn't back up into their school and then we don't replace the very next downstream piece of it and that fails, it's all going to yeah. back up into their school. So yes. I think there's a couple arguments for going ahead and doing that, assuming that we can come up with the money. Right. I, I agree with Julie. That just makes a whole lot of sense. And again, with John and Skiff, I too believe we're heading in the right direction. I'm not big on special town meetings, mm -hmm. but if we need to do it for the sewer, I can understand that. So I appreciate the position you're in. 
Uh, the one other thing that we, uh, it was brought up about uh, the capital budget as far as the capital plan, and we will need more specific numbers from what I understand to be able to plug into that capital plan. Uh, to uh, you know, qualify for our bond rating is my understanding. Just keep that in mind, that's all. Yep, for sure. Anybody else have comments? Nope. All right, so we have moved and seconded the sewer debt service WWTP dash debt for $488,841 which includes paying off the clarifier and the interest on the debt payment for the phase one wastewater treatment plant upgrade with the new bid, the new more expensive bid that has come in should be covered by this. And this does not cover anything to do with any piping replacement. Any further discussion? No. No, lost my piece of paper. Let's see, uh, roll call vote, Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right, that passes 6-0-0. Casey, do we have to do anything regarding the increased amount of um, debt that is going to be required for the wastewater treatment plant bids? That's actually a dual question, a dual meaning not just me answering it. Um, we're working on getting a USDA loan, an additional one to cover that. Right. Um, so we've got documentation, we've got to put together a contract, that sort of thing. And so there's some loan documents that we're waiting to get more information on from USDA. Your turn, Brenda. Ah, okay. So USDA has agreed to pay two point, or, well, they've agreed to consider a loan for an additional 2.2 million, which means that the town is on the hook for 2.4 million um, because that's how much higher the bids were. And partly because they, they took some things from phase two and plugged them into phase one. I think you were aware of that um, because of the efficiency of getting it done while we're in there. Um, so, um, like I said, we, we, would, we would agree based on the new timeline of monies going out that we would take out a loan for two point something million more than what we originally intended to at the end of June. Of course, coming due at the end of June next year, um, but we didn't intend or I, I didn't plug in anything for paying any portion of that down. Um, I did not make any adjustments. So right now we've just got it set up such that we would be paying just the interest portion on that and, and renewing that ban for the following year, worrying about it in 2023, partly because we're paying off the entire clarifier this year. Right. Um, so it seemed to make sense. If, if, you, if you go to your summary sheet, which should have been the first sheet of all of your sewer enterprise fund sheets, that kind of, it, it puts it all together in summary form so that you can see what the expected revenues would be, um, what we would be paying for payroll expenses, debt, um, the indirect costs. And then you'll see there that we're anticipating using 200,000 out of retained earnings. Does everybody have that? No. Where are we? On that, on that that summary sheet that would have been in the front of all of those, those individual sewer um, extensions. What's, what's the uh, title of it? I, it just says sewer enterprise fund and it's just, and it, the account number is just WWTP. Okay. But it has expected revenues as your top line. Do you, some of you see that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Most everybody find it. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, I went through this in detail with James Rivers, who's the financial person for DPC, and him and I agreed that um, the figure I'm showing for expected revenue is very reasonable based on the fact that maybe the schools might not be in full session. So we did, we did reflect kind of a reduction of uh, sewer revenues based on, on that, just in case. And then um, you'll see the expenses that are tied into the each of the expense sheets that you previously voted on. And then we're showing um, that we could take 200,000 out of retained earnings and still meet USDA's requirement that we keep a certain amount in retained earnings uh, from year to year. And that's how we figured we could pay off the clarifier. That all makes sense to everybody. Everybody's good with that. Okay. Okay. So I think that's everything that we had planned to discuss tonight. Um, next week we meet again. I'd like to um, Brenda forward us a list of actual revenues through FY twenty twenty. Um, so I'd like to take some time to look at that next week. Um, the, oh, the swimming people, man-made lake, what do you call it? Tritown Beach is going to come back to us next week. Um, and I think that's the last budget that we need to look at. And then we'll, then we'll start looking at capital. Um, we also might need to revote a couple of budgets. We'll want to revote um, the uh, interest on debt uh, because we did uh, get those figures in that were a lot less than what we had originally anticipated. Um, we might want to revote open space depending on how Casey uh, proceeds this week. She's, she's made some contact on uh, getting the open space plan done. Um, and, and I actually, based on that revenue sheet, the actual revenues that we've received, I did go back in and kind of redo what I thought would be um, a reasonable amount to anticipate for fiscal 22 for local receipts. So I did make that change. I'll probably continue to play with it through the week and then, and then probably get that out to all of you so that you can see what I've adjusted. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, Casey. I just wanted to give y'all a quick update on the questions around the ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, there's a lot of information that's really not a lot of information coming out of the state and the feds. <laughs> Hurry up and wait. Um, there will be dedicated funding coming to the town and grant funding opportunities. So I've started some of that research, <laughs> but Really, we're waiting for interpretation from the feds on how they're going to handle certain elements of what dedicated funding can be used for and what the grant processes will be for these other types of funds. And there's a multitude of funding opportunities out there. It's a question of pulling together stakeholders. This is their recommendation. Pulling together stakeholders and really focusing on how to, how to best use the dedicated funds and what other grants to proceed with. So I just wanted to let people know that I, and I have tried to send out some of the information I get from the MMA so that you have links to the MMA website. You'll see that usually on a Friday or maybe a Monday so that you can see what kind of information the MMA is pushing out. A great deal of the information that you see from the MMA is actually coming from the National League of Cities. So we're pursuing a little bit closer relationship with NLC because at the recommendation of the Mass Municipal Association so that we have closer conduit and closer connections. So as we get more information, I'll keep pushing it out, but I wanted to let people know that I have started looking to see what we're gonna get for interpretation. Thanks. It may have an effect on capital. It may have an effect on a couple of other things. We should also see the class comp substantially complete by the fifth. 
I've invited the personnel board to go to the select board meeting on the 5th. Uh, Mary Accardi, our consultant, is going to be presenting the what I believe will be the substantially complete report, although Brenda and I have a couple of things we need to wrap up with her prior to that. So you're all welcome to come. Um, it's going to be, I think I've got her scheduled for 615 because we have a poll hearing first. Um, so I, once I have a little more information, I was going to try to forward out some background for you all. Thanks. Trevor's got to stand up. I just, I had gotten some information back uh, on the school um, negotiations, just to let you know, um, they're in a one year of a two year contract with uh, Union 38. Negotiations will begin in October. So just to kind of give you some update on that. That's good timing. Thanks. Yep. Go ahead, John. I'd like to ask Trevor when they're gonna open up the town hall. Oh, very soon. <laughs> We've been talking with, uh, yeah, right, thanks. <laughs> Go ahead, Casey. I didn't want I'll you to feel that. left out. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I know that Casey is working with uh, everybody on the opening plan. And uh, while I think most of us are, are now vaccinated, there, there are, um, what we're doing, I think, is to open up by appointment first, if I have this right, Casey. Uh, yes, where we can come down and meet with people where they need to and start dealing with people in person again. Uh, so I think with, you know, I think people wanted to get past uh, election, you know, so Barb's going to set all that up for election. And as soon as that's over, we would start kind of rolling out those making plans. some changes in the plan. Yeah. Yep. And so I've been working with Dick and watching the guidance. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but we got different guidance from the governor this afternoon. I haven't even had a chance to finish reading it. So that may impact what our opening plan looks like. And truthfully speaking, it's probably going to be a phased opening with limited hours at first on limited days and then progressively opening to full capacity. I believe the state has set a date of August 1st for full capacity opening. Yep. So I, I think one of the things that John had in mind, and certainly is one that I had in mind, is when does anybody think that various committees in town will be able to meet in open session? So right now, Skip, we are still required to follow the governor's order, which means we still have to allow for, for remote participation. Um, that's one of our biggest challenges because although we did invest, invest in technology, there were some limitations to what we could invest in. And if the governor, so keep this in mind, if August 1st is the deadline for a complete reopening, the governor may rescind that part of the executive order that allows for remote participation or requires that we have it. When that happens, it'll be a little bit easier for us to handle it right now. We have to handle everything remote and the hybrid really isn't, a, it really is very vague about hybrid, which is what we would be looking at until the order's gone. Um, so the problem for us is setting up the time so we don't hit our capacity, setting up the meetings and making sure that people can hear and participate with the remote connectivity. That's the biggest problem, Skip, in terms of what we can do, but also really a capacity. So I think as we figure out the phasing, the phasing in of how we're going to track things, we're going to have to figure out what we can do in terms of meetings, because we still have multiple meetings on multiple nights and literally the space doesn't allow for it right now. So there's some choices that are gonna to have to be made once we figure out what that phase in is gonna look like. No, I can't wait to sit in a room with everybody again. I just losing that connection. I mean, it's been nice that we've gotten a lot more people involved on these, like the public can join. A lot join of people and, come to meetings. You know, that's You'd be surprised good. how many people can, are showing up. If we can hybrid that, so we still have that participation, which is great, um, but still have the, you know, the, just the personal connection again would be great. Well, we still have social distancing that we have to maintain. So small rooms. Yeah. We yeah. don't have a lot of room to put multiple committees in, in the spaces because we can't maintain social distancing. And so, again, we're still stuck with some of the requirements of the, the COVID safety protocols. John, sure. 
Go ahead, John. Can I make another comment? First of all, I apologize for being late on entering your meeting. However, I was on the Zoom at 20 minutes of five, but I was on the wrong channel. Oh, no. Because I I'm never sorry. got a notice saying there's a meeting at this time. Didn't give me any information. And after making a couple of calls, I finally got a call back which says, okay, you've got to go on to this other new channel, which I've never been on before. Oh, and no. now I got onto the meeting. But guess what? It was almost 35 or 45 minutes late. So if I'm going to be an active participant, I would like to at least get adequate notice. Yeah. And whoever has to do that, please send me the message. John, and I'll I make sure the right channel at the right time. John, I, always, I always have to check the Deerfield website for the yes. my whole the rest of my entire world runs on Zoom meetings, but I do it on Outlook calendar invites and it doesn't happen for Deerfield. So oh. if you've got it written down when it's gonna be, you can always go to the Deerfield website and then if it's the day of, you know, if you know there's a meeting calendar. Today, it's the first thing that comes up on that calendar. And then you just click on it. You click on the agenda and then there's a hyperlink in the agenda. You just click on that. That's how I've been getting into all of these meetings because yeah, don't use the same link. That's as what Brenda meeting. told me, but I couldn't. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, some things it doesn't work. They don't. All I can do is try. Yep. yep. Okay. If, you go, if you go to the, the Deerfield website on the day of the meeting, it'll be a little right. I tried it tonight and it didn't work. Okay. I know Carolyn's had that issue too. It does happen occasionally. I'm sorry, John, but I just looked. So the way you can tell that the hyperlink or the zoom link is, is working is it should be blue and you should be able to hover your cursor over it. And yes, it, we have had problems in the past. I was just going to say what Ali said, which is look on the website on the calendar, click on the finance committee's meeting and then click on the agenda. Um, not to turn this into announcements, but there are tons of vaccine appointments available for anybody, uh -huh. people who need them. Um, the, the FERCOG has a lot, the health center has a ton. There, the rush is over, so it's not a mad, it's not a mad rush anymore. So, get back so Allison, can you take 16 year olds? You need Pfizer, um, for 16 and up. I know. Yes. Yeah. Do you have Pfizer? So right now the right I think Walgreens is the only one who has Pfizer in the region, but you UMass have, uh, UMass, has, UMass it. has it. Yep. Yeah, and that and, um, changes week to week. So I don't want to tell you something that might be, for me. but we don't have Pfizer this week at the health center or at the Cog. But they might soon. So how, Allison, how long after you've had shingles can you get a vaccine? That's a Three great years. question. Ask your doctor. A couple weeks, maybe. Yeah, I'm miserable. <laughs> When you're feeling better, it sucks. Sorry, it's George. So bad. Oh, horrible. Pain uh, makes yeah. me want to get my shingles vaccine. I, I <laughs> implore everybody, please, you do not want this. Bad. Oh, gosh. Sorry to hear that. Mm. All right. We seem to be done with finance committee stuff. Yes. We need to move to adjourn. So moved. Okay. A second. Any discussion? All right, Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalf and I. Skip Olmstead. Hi. John Paturic. Hi. Allison Vandervelden. Hi. That passes six zero zero.